Number 62, unreasonable results. Squids have been reported to jump from the ocean and travel 30 meters, measured horizontally, uh, before re-entering the water. Letter A, calculate the initial speed of the squid if it leaves the water at an angle of 20 degrees, assuming negligible lift from the air and negligible air resistance. All right, so basically uh, we have our little squid, right? It's going to jump at a particular angle above the horizontal. It said 20 degrees. And it's going to travel horizontally. That said the distance was going to be 30 meters. Okay. So this problem should look very similar, the picture at least, to problems you've done in kinematics. All right. Where we have the range, and this is the formula right from kinematics, the overall horizontal range will be equal to the initial velocity squared, right, multiplied by the sine of 2 theta all over g. So what are we being asked for? We're being asked to find the initial velocity. So let's solve that algebraically. So bring the g on up, right? So it's r times g, okay? r times g will equal then vi squared sine of uh, two times your theta. Divide out now the sine of two theta from both sides. So we get vi squared will be equal to rg over sine of two theta. And now we got to get rid of the square, so we got to square root both sides, right? So we'll square root that, square root that. And what happens as a result, I'm going to keep the square there and the squared term will drop. So here's my equation. So to find that, oops, to find that initial velocity, all we got to do is, what is going on? One more time. To find that initial velocity, all we got to do is now plug in the numbers, right? So the initial velocity here will be equal to square root of the range, which was 30 multiplied by g, which is 9.8, divided by the sine of two times your initial angle of 20. Okay, so let's calculate it. So the initial velocity here, actually, yeah, I'll write it right there. Initial velocity will be equal to square root of 30 times 9.8, divided by the sine of 40. So 21 point, it looks like four or so, right? 21.4, and that's meters per second. So that would be the initial velocity. Okay, that takes care of letter A. Let me write that over here. Let's move on now to letter B. The squid propels itself by squirting water, right? What fraction of its mass would it have to eject uh, in order to achieve the speed found in the previous part? Okay, the water is ejected at 12 meters per second and gravitational force and friction, uh, friction are neglected. All right. So for letter B now, let me do that work over here on the, on the left. Recall this formula from the text that the uh, final velocity essentially, right, will be equal to um, the uh, exhaust velocity, okay, or ejection velocity, whatever, uh, multiplied by the natural log of the initial, excuse me, of the, yes, initial mass divided by the uh, final mass, okay? So basically, um, you know, what we're looking to find is we're looking to find what fraction of its mass would it have to eject. Okay, so if I can find this variable here, right, this whole term, that would get me closer to my answer, right? So why don't I solve this for uh, that value? You gotta divide out the uh, exhaust velocity here or ejection velocity, I should say. So VF over VE will equal the natural log of mi over mf. Now to get rid of the natural log, you have to raise both sides up to the e. Okay, raise both sides up to the e. The e cancels the ln. And what we have left will now be, um, really not too much room here, right? But this will be equal to e raised to the vf divided by ve, mi over mf. Okay, so this will be, essentially the uh, fraction, right, that will represent, or I should say the ratio of initial to final. But if I wanna find out how much is left, I should actually flip, flip this fraction, right? And if I flip this side, I'm also gonna have to flip then the left-hand side, okay? So let me do that work. I'm gonna continue it on over on this side, all right? So basically I'm gonna flip now, I'm gonna have MF over MI, okay? And that will be equal to then one over now, E raised to the VF over, let me give myself a little more space, e, e raised to the VF over VE, okay? And now this will tell me the fraction uh, left, right? But since this will tell me the fraction left, 
I want to find out how much it would have had to have ejected, right? So if you think about it this way, if you had $100 and you were left with 20, right? How much did you lose or eject from yourself? You ejected $80 or 80%, right? So you took one and you subtracted the value or the fraction you had left. That's what I got to do here, all right? So to find the uh, fraction ejected, and I'm just going to call it F sub E for fraction ejected, not for force or anything like that, it would basically be equal to then one minus this MF over MI. And I know what MF over MI is, it's just this whole term, right? So that means F sub E will be equal to one minus one over E to the VF over VE, okay? And, um, you know, so now I need to know these two uh, values. And do we know the values? Yeah, we do, right? The ejection um, velocity, they told us water is ejected at 12 meters per second, right? And then the final velocity here is actually the same as the initial velocity as, as it was in the first frame because there's no acceleration. All right. So basically now all I need to do is just plug this on in, all right? So let's plug it on in at the bottom. So FE, I know I'm all over here but I'm very excited to get done with this chapter. Um, so this is gonna be one over uh, E raised to the VF, which was 21.4, all divided by VE, which they told us was 12. And now let's just plug that into the calculator. So now it's gonna be one minus one divided by second E to the 21.4 divided by 12. And here it is, 0.83, right? So FE, Fe now equals 0 0.832, I'll call it, 8.32. So about 83.2% has to be ejected, okay? It says, what is unreasonable about, about this result? I mean, that would be, you know, a, a very large percentage of the mass of the squid to be ejected. I mean, it, it's that's why it's called unreasonable results. Just way too much. And what's, you know, that's the letter C. And then the letter D, what premise is unreasonable? They probably don't jump 30 meters. Okay? Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. Thanks for sticking with me throughout the chapter. All right, this was a long chapter, a lot of crazy formulas, a lot of substitutions, but we made it. All right? So I congratulate you. And now, guess what? We get to move on to chapter nine. I'll see you then.